Hi, boys and girls. I'm so glad you're here. I have a wonderful story to share with you today. It's a story that Jesus told. It's about a dad and his son, and it's in the Bible, my favorite book. I love the Bible because God wrote the Bible and every word is true. He wrote it, especially for me and for you. And when we're quiet and listen, we'll see how very much God loves you and you and you and you and me. Let's get ready to hear today's story, the story of the lost son. Fasten your seatbelt and turn on your listening ears. Good job. Stories of the Bible, the parable of the lost son. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. So Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, um, excuse me? I want my share of your estate now, before you die. Okay. So his father agreed and gave his son his inheritance. A woohoo! A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings. See ya! And moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. Huh? About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Aw, oh, man. And he began to starve. Hey, you! He convinced a local farmer to hire him. Thank you. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the food he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he said to himself, at home even the servants have food enough to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. I know. I will go home to my father and apologize and ask him to take me on as a servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. Sir! His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Ah, ah, yeah! Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. Huh? Hey, you! and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Woohoo! All right, party time, all right, yahoo! The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. Ah, oh, man! But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after wasting your money, you celebrate by giving him a great feast. 
His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. I am so glad the sun went back home, aren't you? The sun stopped doing the wrong thing and turned and went home to his dad to say he was sorry. And his dad forgave him. And that means he said, I still love you. And they celebrated. Did you know that every time we stop doing the wrong thing and turn to God to say we're sorry, God forgives us? I want to stop doing the wrong things and turn to God, don't you? That's our big idea. Turn to God. It's three words. Say it with me. Turn to God. Friends, I want to learn more about turning to God. I wonder if Bible Bunny has any Bible words to help us remember to turn to God. Let's find out. Get bouncy and let's sing his favorite song. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E Bible. Hi, Bible Bunny. We're so happy you came. Today, we heard a story that when we do the wrong thing, we can stop and turn to God and he will forgive us. Our big idea is, turn to God. Bible Bunny, do you have any Bible words to help us remember to turn to God? You do? Great! <sighs> Friends, in Colossians 3.12, it says, you belong to God. He loves you so much. Bible Bunny, those are great Bible words because we belong to God, and because He loves us so much, He will always be ready to forgive us when we mess up. We can turn to God and know He will be there to always love us, and He will always forgive us when we tell God we're sorry. What's our big idea again? It's three fingers. Turn to God. Friends, Bible Bunny wants our help. He wants us to show him how to turn to God. Let's help Bible Bunny. Here's how we're going to help. You need to make a stop sign with your hands, and then you need to make prayer hands with your hands. Okay, when I share a story about doing the wrong thing, I want you to jump up and shout, stop, and turn to God. Try it once with me. Jump up and shout, stop and then say, turn to God. Fantastic, we are ready. Mm, Bible Bunny is playing with his friend and he takes their toy without asking, making the friend sad. Friends, what should Bible Bunny do? Jump up, stop, and turn to God. Yes, turn to God and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me then God will help Bible Bunny make things right with his friend. Now Bible Bunny is doing the right thing. Okay, what if at snack time, Bible Bunny grabs too many cookies from the jar, even though mommy said he could only have one? Friends, what should Bible Bunny do? Jump up, stop, and turn to God. Yes, that's right. Bible Bunny didn't follow mommy's rule, but he can stop, turn to God and say, I am sorry for disobeying my mommy. Please forgive me. And God will say, it's okay. I still love you. Now go tell your mommy you are sorry for disobeying. Now Bible Bunny is doing the right thing. Bible Bunny, did that help you? Friends, guess what? You helped Bible Bunny learn that if he does the wrong thing, he can turn to God. Way to go! What's our big idea? It's three words. Turn to God. Oh, Bible Bunny's so happy that you helped him learn so he can stop doing the wrong things and turn to God. 
Bible Bunny, thanks for visiting with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye! Boys and girls, it's time to stand up and sing a song about following Jesus. always remember to turn to God? No. But does God love us even when we forget? Yes! How much does God love you? This much all the time, even more than my arms can stretch. And will God help us remember to turn to God? Yes, he sure will. Well, it's almost time to go. Let's pray before we do. Let's be very quiet, let's be very quiet. We fold our hands and bow our heads and pray to God. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for wanting us to stop doing wrong things and turn to you. We love you so much. Amen. Time to go. I'll see you next time. And remember, if you do the wrong thing, Stop and turn to God. He loves you so much. Bye, friends.